Thank you for staying with us uh, on Legislative Report. We are now in the distillery at Ridge Runner, a relatively new distillery in the Farmington area, and we have been at a number of different tourism locations today. Uh, and after a long day, sometimes you need to have a drink of uh, either wine or spirits, and you can help us with both of those here, Christian. This is Christian Clay, namesake of the Christian Clay Winery, which is right across the street. Um, Christian, tell me a little bit first, before we start talking about the steel and the new distillery about uh, the history of the winery that I know your mom uh, started across the street. Um, well, uh, my parents um, bought the uh, farm in 1985. That was the same year I was born. So there's still a running debate about whether I came first or the winery did. <laughs> <laughs> but either way, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's really been my home, um, you know, since I was born. And uh, I think in about 1989 was when we first planted our vineyards, um, and those took a, uh, a long while to get going, but they were the, um, some of the first vineyards in Fayette County. Um, and from there, um, it was a little too much to make grape jelly, so my mom took the plunge into uh, a business and uh, created the winery in 1997. Um, and they named it after me um, for reasons I still can't quite understand, uh, but um, it's been a lot of fun growing up with it, and uh, I'd like to think I've gotten a really good appreciation for wine and for, uh, for the area in Fayette County. Now, uh, you have some award-winning wines across the street, and a number of them are, lo are named after local um, landmarks or local uh, tourist destinations. Can you tell us just a quick little bit about some of the wines that you make? Um, well, we just really, really love the history of this area. Um, my family's always been huge history buffs, and um, we just really love having so much really cool history around Fort Necessity, Washington Tavern, um, you know, several big landmarks. Um, and we thought that we were really uh, honoring sort of the area and um, the history of the area by naming our wines after many of these historic landmarks. Um, also, it's just a really cool talking point. We have a little blurb on the back of our wine bottles describing the different historical um, places that they're named after, and um, it just really makes giving tours and things really cool because I get to discuss all the history that goes along with every bottle of wine. Um, there's no real, uh, we don't have any sort of special wines that go around with you know, different historical things like there's no special reason why Washington Tavern Red is red, but we just wanted to um, really just embrace the history of the area and um, you know, show that through, through our products. Now you mentioned that you get to talk to people uh, when they're coming into the tasting rooms uh, about um, the history of the local um, names of mm -hmm. your wines. And earlier today we were at Kentuck Knob uh, and then we were out in the Ohio Pow area uh, and, and now we're here with you. Uh, and as we've talked to everyone, we've talked about the type of guests or clients that they have that come in. And I noticed uh, here in the distillery a great uh, wall that you have with push pins of people that have been here and, and everything from uh, Alaska and Hawaii and Russia to right here around Pennsylvania, there are people. Tell us a little bit about some of your favorite guests that might have come in and, and where they've been from. Um, well, it's, it's hard to pick any, uh, <laughs> any single guest, but uh, I mean, we've had people come in from all over the world. Um, I originally started with just a, a map of the United States and people have told me I have to get a world map because we have, you know, so many different people from different places coming in. Um, you know, we get, uh, you know, tons of local people, tons of people, you know, from Pittsburgh and Morgantown and, you know, Columbus and, um, you know, even from the D.C. area. But it's always really cool to get people from, from farther away, you know, a little bit more obscure locations. Uh, I think we just, we finally completed one of our maps because we had someone come in from uh, Montana. And that was our, the last one to check off our list. Um, but it's just always fun to, you know, we always ask everyone who comes in, you know, where are you from, you know, um, what brings you to town, you know, and uh, a lot of people we get are just passing through, um, you know, Route 40, there's, you know, tens of thousands of cars pass through here on a daily basis, but you know, a lot of times we'll have people also who have, uh, you know, are interested in wineries and distilleries and will come from, you know, fairly great distances to come check out different wineries and distilleries, uh, you know, around here. Um, 
So I, I want to get uh, get to talking about the distillery itself, but okay. before we do that, what made you want to go from the wine business to uh, to the booze market? Um, well, that's really easy actually, um, because while I grew up with the winery um, and I love wine and I appreciate wine, what I really really love is whiskey. Uh, I love bourbon style whiskey. And that's just really um, what I wanted to do in, um, you know, in Fayette County and in Pennsylvania. Um, I've been down to Kentucky a few times, and they're all about bourbon down there. And I think Pennsylvania could be the same way. Um, so there's a really uh, nascent industry for or whiskey and bourbon industry in Pennsylvania, and I think it has really the potential to grow you know, into something as big as Kentucky or Tennessee. Um, and I, I just like everything about it. I like, uh, you know, making it and aging it and, of course, tasting it. So. Now, your whiskey still has a couple years until you'll be satisfied to, to bottle it because I know you're, mm -hmm. you're a perfectionist when it comes to those. But you have some great products that are on the shelves right now. Um, you know, I've, I've tried and, and would put your, uh, your vodka up against most any vodka that's in the state store and, mm -hmm. and for a comparable price. Uh, what are some of the other items that you still sell that you're currently distilling and, and mixing here? Um, well, um, a vodka is our big one. Um, vodka, uh, we do um, we do really well with our vodka. We get a lot of people who really like it. Um, and I think the big uh, secret with the vodka is the water we use. Um, we use uh, you know natural spring water um, from the area, and that's you know uh, vodka is usually about 40% alcohol, which means it's 60% water. So you can make the best alcohol in the world, but you're going to taste, you know, tap water if you make it out of tap water. So um, vodka is a big one that, that I like to do with, you know, because we can get that source that naturally here. Uh, the other thing is um, our moonshines and white whiskey. Um, you know, we're really uh, trying to get as much um, as many of our things locally as possible. So uh, for our whiskeys, um, we get all of our corn and grain within Pennsylvania. Um, and in fact, next year, um, we actually had a uh, farmer come and plant corn right across the street on the winery property. So we will be getting um, about 80% of our grain from um, right across the street here, um, which we're really looking forward to. And, um, you know, I didn't really have a background in making um, uh, liquor or moonshine or anything or that. So really, I just took the best ingredients I could find put them together, put them through a still, and uh, through a lot of trial and error, mostly error, <laughs> um, you know, we've come out with our products. Um, so, you know, we have some flavored moonshines now. Um, we currently have an apple pie, a peach, and a root beer. Um, and uh, those are, you know, a lot of fun. They're a little bit lower proof, so, you know, you can sip on them. And then we do a little bit higher proof um, straight whiskey uh, at 100 proof, um, which is a little bit more for your uh, moonshine connoisseur, shall we say. And, um, and we also do the vodka and the rum. So. Sure. Now, uh, we're, we're running out of time in our segment today. I'm sure that if people wanted to order from you here in the state of Pennsylvania, they can do so through your website or contact mm -hmm. you. And we can put that uh, information here on the screen. Okay. Uh, you know, I also want to talk, since we're this episode's all based on tourism, I want to mention just some of the agritourism uh, opportunities that you have here. You're a working farm growing um, the grapes and now mm -hmm. some of the grain products that you're using at the distillery. Uh, but you also have special events here on property. Yes. Uh, will you tell me just a little bit about some of those special events? Sure. Um, the winery uh, right across the street does most of our special events. Um, we have a 1880s bank barn um, that we do a lot of weddings and um, corporate events in. We also have a pavilion for um, on a stage for music and entertainment like that. Um, and uh, you know, we do tons of tours and um, that sort of thing. One thing that's really cool uh, about the winery and the distillery being right here, um, we offer tours of both places. So, you know, if you're interested at all in alcohol production or, you know, um, that part of agriculture, um, we offer tours that will take you um, through the winery, including a tasting, all the way through the vineyard, um, where people can actually see the grapes growing and how they're picked and harvested and pruned. 
um, you know, all the way through that process. And then they can see the next step coming over here, taking some of that wine, putting it through the still, and turning it into uh, things like port and brandy. So, um, you know, there's a lot of distilleries, there's a lot of wineries, but there's not so many wineries with distilleries where you can see the entire And you can process. tour both right in the same, same visit. Mm -hmm. Hey, thank you so much for, uh, for letting us take a look. Mm -hmm. And thank you for tuning in to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Matthew Dowling.